Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Saturday morning live stream. I hope everybody's doing good. Just waiting to, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. If my Martina and anybody else is going to be joining in today, but uh, yeah, I've been working on my model here, as you can see, and did a little bit of filling on those rocks because for some reason, I don't know, maybe it's the STL file or whatever, but there was a lot of lines and, well, I thought, ah, that needs to look a little bit smoother. So I used a little bit of my plastic putty and started filling it up, some of the lines a little bit so that it doesn't look too bad when I do the painting on that. Hey, Brian, how you doing? But yeah, there's still a lot of work to do on this one till it's done. There you go, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I finished up uh, Rocket Raccoon last weekend and put a little bit red orange here so that it looks like flame is coming out this is supposed to be a big smoke ring and then we got rocket uh, Groot standing here and then there's going to be a big long rocket glued on to this one but uh, I thought before I put the rocket on there I have to do the rest of the painting first. But yeah, anyway, I thought today, try to finish up the painting. And just to make sure, let me post a link to the hangout here just in case if anybody wants to jump in. Uh, no lagging on my channel. Well, yeah, I, it looks like uh, I've got a good internet connection here. <laughs> I mean, it cost me a lot of money, almost 50 euros. That's around about, what, 55? 58 US dollars, something like that, for a, I have 50 download, 12 upload. But yeah, as long as it's not lagging, that sounds good. So what I need to do now Get this model a little bit on the side. And I've got extra my camera from the printer set up here on set in here so that uh, you can see what I'm doing there. Whereby, huh? Not good from the state right now. Uh oh. But um, yeah. Let me transfer over. There we go. Um, down in the corner, but it um, does look a little bit stupid. Wonder if that'll work out. It's sitting right there right now. So that means 
after train station. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's strange. Okay, so at least you can see what I'm what I'm going to be doing here. But yeah, let me. Yeah, wait a minute. I'm supposed to shake these things up before you put some paint in. This. Uh, this acrylic paint that I'm using right now is thicker compared to um, normal, let's say, uh, Vallejo, for example. The Vallejo paint, that is really thin, so, you know, I have to put more than one coat on if you want to, uh, hey there. 3D printing doctor, how you doing? Hi there. Derek, how you doing? There's the link up above if you want to jump on in. More than welcome. Yeah, Doc, long time no see, man. How you doing? I hope everything's good. How's how's it go, how's it going with uh, ah thank you yeah how's it how's it going with your uh, Eva I hope she's doing good ah thank you Doc give me just a second here. I want to start mixing up some darker gray tone first. And it looks like I got the right combination now. So I'm going to use some gray tones for the rocks. Mariano, hey, hello, how you doing? I would have mixed up this paint a little bit earlier before I started the stream, but yeah, you never know how long it takes before the paint starts drying and then you're standing there and you don't have any, any good paint to use. So here we go. Should I use this one or should I use a wider one? Oh, everything's okay, but uh, uh, she's cool and ran out of money over December, so I've been modeling instead. Uh huh. Well, I hope that lady is going to be doing good, you know. Yeah, but you know, really strange, and I do not understand why. When I'm over there on another live stream, I don't want to say the name, you know, this here will be epic, uh, cool. When I'm over there on watching another live stream, I always say, or I always type in, hi there, everybody. Yeah, and what is? Nobody answers. And then I find out today that that person blocks me even there in the chat so that I can't even say hi to everybody. I mean, that is really unfriendly, you know? 
But uh, yeah, what can you do? I think I think this might look cool what I'm doing here. And then I think maybe a sand color then on the bottom between the rocks. I think that might do the trick. Community interaction it is important. Yeah, that's true. But uh, yeah. And then in one of the discords that I was in, I was thrown out of that one. So I have to... <laughs> I don't know. And then, of course, he always comes over to my channel and presses thumbs down. For no reason at all. Oh, yeah. And then, after I get this model finished, I think I'm going to be giving this one to a to a good friend because uh, <laughs> I'm running out of room. I'm definitely running out of room here. And of course, the biggest problem is I don't even know how my next apartment is going to look like, you know? Who knows? I might give away a few models. <laughs> live stream king. No, I'm only doing the live streams on, 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 uh, on Saturdays now. I mean, I'd say Walter is uh, the live stream king. <laughs> but uh, as you noticed, he had to take a break. I think that was in uh, December. That was probably getting too much for him. But you know how that is, you know, when you're married and you have children. Yeah? You can't always do that like you would like to, I think, but yeah, you know, you got to know for yourself. And uh, yeah, I think Walter is still alive right now, I'm not sure. But he's having problems with this internet, as I saw. So, who knows? If it's the internet or if it's YouTube, but as far as I can see, as long as my stream is going good, might have something to do with his internet or with his uh, OBS settings. I'm not sure. Huh? You made something yesterday. Well, Doc, did you make a video on that one and uh, put it up in YouTube? I'm not sure if I got a notice that you put up a new, a new video i have to go and check that out oh on um, thingiverse ah um one second doc one second uh do 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 add moderator yeah doc you are a moderator <laughs> now you can post a link if you want Yeah.
It's an epic one. Come style the solar. Oh, interesting. 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 Yeah, you know, if my desk here, if it was a little bit bigger, because I have a Wacom Genius tablet. That's one that's got the pen and the mouse. That thing is in the box. I pulled it out last year. Put it here on the desk, right here where you can see where I'm painting right now. Then all of a sudden I thought, well, you know, that'd be good to work with, but next problem coming up is uh, where can I work? <laughs> and then I thought, okay, this isn't going to be too good right now. So I packed it back up in the box. I quit. One second there, Doc. Let me... I mean, I know I printed everything here in brown because I thought maybe that brown would be a, a good base color, but right now I'm not really sure at all. I do think I should have used a dark gray, then maybe, maybe I wouldn't have had to do so much painting. True, I brought a cheap monitor graphics tablet. I wanted somewhere to park the stylus. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Hey, Jake, how you doing? And Info Mario, hey, hey, hey there. How you guys doing? Now, I'm just wondering where Martin is now. Because uh, normally he'd be here on the live stream too, probably painting or whatever. But, uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe he's out shopping. <laughs> uh. Uh, you're 3D printing right now. Well, that's nice. I happen to see the uh, the carriage. Yeah, uh huh. Okay. Did y'all happen to see that video from um, uh, from that uh, oh that um, what's it called again? Damn, I can't remember. I can't remember the name correctly. One second here. That is a uh, uh, da, 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 A B C D. Uh, the Friday three D printing uh, community hangout. They had live stream. And uh, they had, 
in the hangout, they had the guys there from Murph. And that was really interesting. That was really interesting. And it looks like y'all gonna be having a lot of tacos to eat this time again. So it looks like the taco stand is gonna be there. Yeah, 3,000 tacos. Hey, Mr. Butcham, how you doing? <laughs> 3,000 tacos, you, you got to imagine, hey? Just a big, just big question. If there's only 1,500 people there, that means everybody's going to have to eat at least two tacos or more. But, yeah, Murph goes a couple of days. <laughs> So who knows? I mean, Murph is getting bigger and bigger from what I hear. That'll probably come to a point where instead of uh, instead of 3,000 tacos, who knows? It might be 5,000 or 6,000 tacos this time. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that uh, guys and gals or whoever that is, you know, that is there making them, I'm pretty sure they're going to be super happy, you know. Huh? Mario, you felt weird entering the school and not going to class? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, <laughs> Mr. Butch, I'm going to eat at least four. So there better be only 750 people there. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Hey, you know. If those tacos are good, yeah, why not? You know. But yeah, pay attention to your figure, man. Don't eat too much. Yeah, but if I was there, I would definitely eat a couple, too. <laughs> Let me finish up a couple of stones here. So that I can lay my paintbrush down and then take a look at those thingiverse links that Doc is posting. Yeah, I was thinking about also making a couple of pictures, you know. But then I thought, no, nah, wait a minute. Wait until you got this thing finally finished. Everybody's already seen how it looks like, you know, in in a raw. But how is it going to look like when it's finally finished? That is the next question.
What do you guys think? Is that going to work? As you can see right now from the gray stones that I've already painted, yeah? And then let's say uh, a lighter color, a sand color between the stones so that it looks a little bit like ground or something like that. What do you guys think? You think this will look okay? Looks good, Flats. I'm looking good. Huh? Ah, thank you. Huh? Thank you. I'm just wondering, you know, you know, uh, everybody has an idea of how something should be painted, yeah? Hey, Vince, good morning. Yeah, I'm doing some work here on my... my diorama from Rocket Raccoon and Groot. This is... Uh, a Christmas present that I got from a nice lady. She sent me the STL files. So that I could print this out. And you know what I see? Huh, it's good that I have to mix up some more paint because right now I see an area where I need to do some more filling. That's something that I didn't notice before. Yeah. So one second here. Let me lay this down over here. Get this one out. Get this one out. And of course, paper towel, something that you should always have. I like, for example, RC Live. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting what he what he's always doing. That is really interesting. I made a video in chocolate, yeah. And then one layer on a piece of toast. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there's a company over there in the Netherlands. I don't know why. They contacted me last year asking me if I would like to do a review on their 3D chocolate printer. I said, well... Is that the only printer that you guys got? And they said, yeah, that's the only one that we have right now, but we are planning on making a couple more. And I said, well, yeah, cool. It'd be interesting. If you'd send me one, I'd be more than happy to test that out, make some reviews, and then you can see how much chocolate I'd be eating then during the stream. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I haven't got that yet, so I don't know. Are they going to send me one, or was that some kind of a fake Facebook chat, or what was that? But, anywho, let me scroll up here a little bit. Doc, you posted more than one link, so open in a new tab. Open in a new tab. C1, C2, oh man, there's three, there's number four. And while you're posting links, Doc, let me post a link too. Yeah. There's a link for the Hangout if anybody wants to come and jump on in and say hi. I've 
Hey, 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 what do we have here? The Felinia Malkin. Malcolm. <laughs> Stylus holder. Uh, that looks cool. <laughs> uh, nice, so I want to fix that. Fix the uh, webcam. This just the Wacom holder and the neck neck. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's a lot of filament that you got to use for Eva, huh? That is definitely a lot of filament. Oh, okay. That's that one. Yeah, okay. Man, oh, man. Yeah, but uh, Doc, how is how is that with Eva? Are you going to print her from top to toe? I mean, is she going to be standing up and walking around, or how are you going to do that? Yeah, it's a lot of money I don't have. Yeah, I... Oh, yeah, I know what you mean there, Doc. I know exactly what you mean there. Then, of course, you got to be careful. Make sure your printer is running good. Everything's working fine so that you don't have any fail prints, you know? Otherwise, uh, first half torso, arms, neck, and head. Yeah. Hey, and that's also going to be a female, right, Doc? So don't forget, you know, to make the torso correct. <laughs> <laughs> Then the legs challenge. I have good motors for that now. Just need to buy them. Ah, cool. So, unfortunately, I have a couple of cracks here that I have to fill up or do any more painting. I don't know. Maybe there wasn't enough lighting or something like that. Otherwise, I would have filled those cracks up too. But, uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, we're, I'm still in the, in the middle of all in in the middle of all this process here, so that's not too bad. It's really nice. I've got a real fine tubing on here, so that means I don't have to spread everything around and get it right into the crack. That's from where the, the base pieces came together.
food shopping. Okay, take it easy there. Yeah, normally I would have gone out for some food shopping today too. But it's, you know, it's really cool, really cool. Day before yesterday, we had a minus seven degrees Celsius, yeah? Yesterday, it was minus three degrees Celsius. And we had about, I'd say, one or two centimeters of snow laying around all over, you know? Then last night, or better, better said this morning, around about two o'clock in the morning when I went to bed, uh, it was raining. And, you know, what's also crazy, I mean, during the daytime when the sun is up, it was at minus three. Yeah? And in the evening, before I went to bed, it was a plus four at nighttime. I mean, there's got to be something crazy there. Yeah, but anyway, I woke up this morning around about 11 o'clock, got up, opened the curtains in the living room, looked out the window, and I was thinking, wow, that must have been a warm rain that was coming down all the time because you can't see any snow anywhere. It is all washed up. <laughs> Which on the one side is good for me because that means then I won't have any problems driving with my electro scooter. Because unfortunately, I have about a 20 degree slope right here on, on the side of the house. Yeah. Right here on the side of the house. My electro scooter is parked down next to the door where there's a window so that I can put the cable out to charge it up, you know? That's where I have it parked. And then I have to turn around and drive back up the slope. That's a 20 degree. And then I come up and then I come onto the passenger uh, street, so to say, from nine o'clock till six o'clock in the evening, no cars out our trucks are allowed to drive through here because it's only for uh, pedestrians. Yeah, but anyway, I wanted to go out this afternoon, go over to the grocery store, and what is? It is still raining. Not hard, you know, slightly, but, uh, yeah. It'd be hard for me to do. Even if it's raining nightly, because I don't have any type of uh, total covering, you know, with a window or with doors or something like that. The thing is open. And I don't have a rain jacket or a poncho, you know, like I had in the military. Damn, if I had one of those, that would have been perfect. You know, those rain ponchos that we had back in the U.S. Army every time when it was raining? Oh, that was perfect. That was perfect. You'd keep everything covered up and I mean with such a rain poncho if I had one of those here <laughs> I could probably cover up my complete electro scooter when I'm sitting on it and then get out my baseball cap that's the best umbrella that I could think of when you're underway Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you know how that is. If you don't have one, well, you have to wait until it stops raining. Hey, hey Mario, what's that? Uh, X, Y, draw in progress. Ah, interesting. So, 
this side is done, that means I'm going to have to turn you around a little bit so that I can get over to this side. Then. Some more black. Oh man, come on now. And as I was saying in the beginning, this uh, acrylic paint that I'm using, it's thicker, a lot thicker compared to uh, Vallejo paint, which means. You can use this stuff to do a first coat. You don't have to worry about doing a second one. Ah, come on now. Get under there. So let's see if I got the right combination again. Looks like it. Well, it could be a perfect match again. Not bad, not bad. With this batch here, that might just be enough to finish it up. Uh, yeah, let's use this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, I mean, I wish, I really wish I had the money, you know, I'd love to come to Murph. That would be a super experience. When Walter was uh, talking on his channel about uh, his daughter traveling around in Germany, <laughs> Anybody here with families or something like that, you know? Not any perverse men. <laughs> well, if Walter knew me, he wouldn't have any problem sending or saying to his daughter, yeah, you can go over there and stay overnight or a couple of nights over there in, uh, with Don because... Uh, one thing's for sure. First off, I am not perverse. And second off, as a Buddhist, which I am from religion, nothing of any sort would I try to do or have with any female that I am not married to. But yeah, I mean, I hope his daughter at least has a little bit of uh, self-defense knowledge. I mean, over here in Germany, there's been so many reports, unfortunately, unfortunately, about uh, gang-banged girls 
and other girls that have been sexually abused. But it's not from Germans. It's from those refugees that we have here. Unfortunately. I mean, that that is uh, something that's not just a joke. That is something that is really serious. And I mean, the, the Germans here, they are really pissed off about that. That Merkel even allowed them to come in. But yeah, enough from that. Anyway, I hope everybody is doing good. But uh, while I have everybody here, I do have a question for you. Y'all know, every once in a while, I've been having problems with my one how. Print a month or two, PLA with 215, and it would be coming out like butter, you know? No problems at all. This last week, every time when I tried to print, I was going up to 220, 230, and the filament, you know, with the direct drive, just push the lever down and you can push the filament through. And, yeah, that's something that I always do, you know, when I'm changing colors. I, I do that all the time to push out that old color until I see it that the, you know, through priming, see that I get the correct color of filament coming out. Uh, today, I wanted to print something. This guy over there in the... Uh, Facebook group from the One How D9. He designed a new Y carriage for in the front of the printer. Turn the camera around so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, where are you now? There you are. Yeah, this one right here, you know. That would be completely changed out normally with something like this, yeah? And then it'll have two screws to where you can tighten that thing up. Because what I can see right now, this thing is loose. So that's something that I definitely have to uh, change out. But uh, today... When I was trying to print that, I mean, you won't believe this. I was at 290 degrees Celsius before the filament started, started to come out easily through the nozzle. So my thought is, do I have a defect the mister? Or could it be that there's something going stupid with the program that's on that printer? Just wondering what you guys think. And my first thought is maybe that it might be some kind of a defect in the thermistor. So, in that case, I'll have to go and uh, change out the thermistor, which is no big problem. Just have to. Ah, Radio Man, hello. Man, finally put my end three together today. Cool. 
Okay. Take care there, radio man. Yeah, but I mean, there's that's really strange, you know. For all the first, I would say, five or six layers, they were coming out really nice. And then all of a sudden, it was looking like I was having an under extrusion problem with the filament. I went from 280 to 295. It looked like it was starting to come out good again, but at that, I mean, uh, okay, that's the temperature that it's showing me on the display. I'm not sure if that is the true temperature that was on the nozzle, you know. But yeah, anyway, I stopped that print, told him to cool down because that's something that can't be true. Uh, could be that thermal paste got into the heat break. No, there's no thermal paste there. Uh, heat break got damaged or was reading was off or then. It... No, and there's no PFTE tube in there. That thing has an all metal. I mean, this printer can go up to 350 without any problem at all, you know. But uh, I don't have any of those type of filaments, and I'm not really interested, you know, in those type of filaments where you have to uh, go up to 300 degrees to print. That's right now, I do not have a need for such filaments. And two weeks ago, I was printing that light gray, and then I wanted to, wanted to go over to the metallic silver, and then I was having problems with the metallic silver. But that was, uh, that was because of the 1.64 millimeter diameter that I had there. And lucky enough, that I informed the boss at the filament manufacturer from where I got that. He told me that is a third-party filament. Oh, no. And uh, 
He got out another roll. He checked that out. Then he found out, oh, that roll is only sitting at 1.72. But he tried printing with that on his Ultimaker, too. And then he told me, yeah, OK, that, that one's coming out really nice. I'll send you that roll that I opened up right now. But I haven't received it yet, although I sent him the STL file for the parts that I wanted to, to uh, print with that. Who knows? Maybe he's printing those six pieces for me. Because that's one STL file, which I need six of. Who knows? Maybe he's maybe he printed those. That's why I haven't received that filament yet. But who knows? Who knows? So, start checking up everything here. Looks like I've got everything covered up now. Except for a couple of small areas here. Ah, here's one too. There's another one that I didn't see. That's something that I'm going to try out later. I'm going to change out the thermistor that is in it. See if that will work out. If that's the case, then I know what the problem is. Then it's the thermistor. No, but it's, um, and also the thermistors that I have, they're not the normal bead. They're the uh, cylinder thermistors that I have. Normally, they can't be broken any, at any point, you know. But you slide those in, and then you have a little imbus on the top. You just have to tighten that down just a little bit so that it won't move. But, yeah, no idea. No idea what's going on right now. I mean, I've got it to the point now to where I could do the updates, but uh, I need to get the 
PDF or whatever it is from one how that says exactly how you're supposed to do that update because I have the files already for the first update and files for the second update I can get those too but yeah But it looks like I'm getting to a point now to where I can say this is done. But let's check out a couple of areas just to make sure I did get it. Oh, no, there's one missing. There's a rock missing. There we go. Second batch of paint is used up, so I don't have any excess laying around. So there we go. I got all the stones now. Put it up on this camera. Oh, wait a minute. Before I do that, let me change camera settings. Oh, and, huh? yeah, there we go. Thank heavens. Uh, Al sent me a link so that I can join his Discord. For some reason, I don't know why, I flew out of uh, Discord from Al Kilroy. 
because that's a nice discord that he's got there too. But um, yeah, wait a minute, what did I want to do? Him? Oh man. Ah, yeah. Now I know what I wanted to do. And set in one, set two. Yeah, set two. Transition. So now. Got my main camera so that I can show y'all. Uh, minimize. So I can show you what I've got done now. All the rocks with a darker gray. Rocket is finished. Smoke ring is almost finished, but I will be doing some white painting on this, you know. And then I was thinking about using a sand color to put in between the rocks so that, you know, it looks something like a desert area or something like that. But what I'm going to do with this part, with this part right here, or this, I don't know if that's supposed to be some type of a box or a block I'm not even sure but there's one there there's one where he's standing on and then of course I don't know maybe I'll leave these in brown so that that looks more like a, a wood or something like that but yeah <laughs> it's getting to a point hey Scott how you doing Good morning, good afternoon. Yeah, looks good, thank you. Yeah, that's the painting that I've done right now, is the stones, so, yeah, okay. Yeah, the nice thing about the acryl paint, yeah, you can wash it off with water. Here it is. Yeah, got that done now, so. Yeah, but as soon as my retirement payment comes, I have contact to one eBay seller. He sells the Vallejo paints. So I can get the greens. I need almost every shade that you can think of from green. I only have one green. That's a dark one, I think it is. And browns. Brown, I don't have any brown at all. And then the metallic colors, and of course, the thinner and the airbrush wash. That's two things that I need to get to. But uh, I made a complete list, sent him that per email, so that he knows what I need. And then, uh, I don't know. I'm going to do that to send him something like 30 euros each month and then he sends me a package of colors or paints or whatever. But uh, yeah, let's just say as soon as my retirement and all, as soon as that's on my account, I can call him up and ask, hey, how, how's the best way to do this? Because as you know, if I buy it through eBay, ah, mix your own, yeah. That'd probably be the best idea because I do have this thicker stuff here. So that wouldn't be any problem at all. Matter of fact, why don't I give that a try as soon as this is done? That's something I can give a try on. Because for the brown, you only need the red, the blue, and the green, and the yellow. If I have to be careful, I can always mix a good dark brown. Uh, 
Uh, you have a great video on mixing greens. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, where was it? Yeah, when I was do when I was doing uh, Rocket Raccoon, I was mixing up the brown there S to paint his body or his fur or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, I was doing that, but get a lighter a lighter shade. You have to be careful, you know, with the mixture. When you're doing that, uh, da, 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 da. I need some water. There we go. Try to wash this out a little bit so that it doesn't dry too thick, you know. And clean this one up a little bit so I can use it again. So I can use that one again. Yeah. So, oh well, yeah. Looks like it's going to take a little bit. And because this, uh, this in the bottle set that I have here because this is thicker. I mean, they say if you if you want to, you can thin it up with water, you know. But uh, yeah, if you use this as a thicker one, then you won't have any problems. You know, with one passage, and you've got it covered up good enough so that you don't have to do a second one. You know, on stuff like this. But if you're printing miniatures or something like that, uh, you're gonna have to put water into that one and thin it up a lot. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. I'm going to keep the white here just in case. A little bit of white to lighten, lighten the color up. That would be almost essential. So we got those three colors. Oh, that's getting dry. It's getting dry. Hey, Scott, how you doing? How's it going on your side? 3D printing anything this weekend or this last week? watching a lot of videos this last couple of days and over there in my discord um, where did I put it was that other stuff oh yeah over there in in, uh, in my discord in other stuff I found a video today, and I thought that was really interesting. I'm bad, buddy. Doing good. I haven't seen you around lately on Mike's channel. No. Nope. Mike won't invite me to his channel anymore, and he even blocks me from the chat, so I can't say hi to everybody. No reason why. I mean, uh, acting like a child. I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't said anything bad to him. You know, I don't know what's going on there. But yeah, let, let that be on the good side. No, but uh, yeah, found a uh, interesting video. If anybody is interested in. Uh, for example, doing a green screen, you know, putting green screen in back, lighting it up and, and setting up your cameras and everything so that you can have, you know, interesting background and everything like that. 
um, let me post a link to that YouTube video here. That guy, very informative. And also showing you don't need an expensive system to do a green screen. And showed, for example, a green screen, a green screen setup. You have a big, wide, tall, backing green screen. Then you have, I think it was four or five lighting systems. Yeah. In a, all in one package for $169, which is not bad at all. Two lights that I have, I mean, they'd be perfect for the front lighting, and then all I need is just two more for, to light up the green screen. And then I could play around with that stuff too, but this is not the right room to do that. I'd need a complete different apartment with an extra room to where I can make my maker space, have my desk, and then have, for example, a green screen in the back of me. Then have something like uh, Star Wars or Battlestar Galactica or something like that fighting in the background. <laughs> That'd be cool. whereby I'd have to probably be careful there. Otherwise, I'd get infringement problems with YouTube. But, uh, yeah, it'd be no problem. From some old games, you know, from star fighting or something like that copy that, you know, make a video out of that, you know, and then use that in the background. From the old games that are from back in the 80s and 90s or something like that. That'd be cool. Now, but anyway, I found that. And then, um, <sighs> down here in 88, where the hell? Oh, yeah. And questions about printers. I posted the picture there where Martin was trying to paint and his cat was biting into the paint, into his paintbrush or trying to bite into the back of it. I mean, that picture is really sweet. But yeah. Okay, that's getting to a point now. Let me finish up. Wait a minute. Yeah, blue and yellow and you get your green color. Mix a little bit of red to it, and you get your brown. Or in this case, a sand color. Like I said, it's going to be a light sand color. Because I don't have anything. I got a lot of yellows. Yellows and skin colors. Medium yellow. Yellow rum. Okay. This is a beige red. Beige red. Okay. It's almost like a skin color. Oh yeah, and the, wait a minute, I have two greens. It's a medium olive and an olive green.
the Vallejo paints that I have here, they were set for one package. It was one package of eight colors from private to private and eBay. I got that for around 10 euros, something like that. And then the other colors that I have, they're from three packages for 19 euros each, postage free, you know, from so-called base set and then uh, advanced set. And then I don't know what the third one was. I think it was some kind of a army set or something like that. But uh, from the army set, there was only two greens in there, a couple of grays, a black, Okay, black, black I don't have to worry about. Oh, yeah, uh, one set that was a gunmetal. So I've got different shades of blues and then uh, silver in there, which is really cool. I use that silver for, for Rocket's uh, gun that he has right there. That's that silver color. And then the rocket launcher is also with that silver color. But yeah, I mean, every once in a while, it's one thing that I enjoy is painting. I don't know. I have to be in a, I'd simply said, in a good mood so that I can do painting because this is something that I can't do every day. But uh, it is fun. It is fun. So, I had to And of course, with red and blue, you get your violet color. So let's start off with a little bit. Each. I can hear it. I'm shaking. How much you gotta shake it before it's really mixed up to a point. So let me see here what I get together. Oh man. Am I stupid or what? I don't buy the tone. Uh, no, it's more like a red brown. So, I already knew. means I gotta change cameras again so that you guys can see what I'm doing here. And transform. There we go. Yeah. Right now I'm mixing up the colors. Uh, oh, come on now. Camera was backwards. Yeah, there you can see. Right now, I'm at a dark brown. I mean, it's not really dark, it's more like a middle brown. So, I'm going to try lighten it up with a little bit of white. 
Let's see if I can get my sand color out of it. Put just a little dab in it first off. Let's see if that'll lighten it up. Yeah, it's lighting it up, but. doesn't really look like the sand color that I want. Uh, do believe. It's getting there. Now it's getting there. There we go. Looks like a good portion too, so that might just be enough for what I need. Let's see how that comes out. Yeah. Looks like I'm going to have to put maybe a second coat on it, even because lighter color on darker colors. It's not coming out nice. So I definitely have to go and put a second coat on this. This is not covering good enough. But anyway, maybe if I get a little bit of luck today, in about two or three hours, maybe it'll stop raining so that I can go to the grocery store and finally get some food. Some places that gray is still a little bit wet. But it's not a problem. I mean, this is not a correct sand color that I wanted, but it is a lot lighter in the color. And it might just do its job if I go and use a little bit of uh, shading or 
Yeah. Some type of a shading. Yeah. Definitely have to go over that again. get a little bit of the area here done so that I can show you a little bit better how this is looking. A bit of sand on top of that flat rock there. See what you guys say. What do you think about it? If that color is okay. What do you guys think? Think that color is light enough for between the rocks and everything? From what you can see in the camera right now? Think that's gonna be okay? Paintbrush is getting to be a pain. In the ass. So. Smaller areas with a small mound. And. Of course, I gotta get that one how D9 up and running again so that I can start printing arts 
for that uh, Ausmetzer battleship. I mean, it didn't cost me too much money, but it did cost me money, so it would be nonsense. You buy something and you don't print it, you know? That would be a bit of nonsense, so I gotta, I gotta make that one. in between, especially when the Groot is already glued down so that I can't move him out of the way. It would have been probably better if I would have waited before I glued him down. Is there where I need to put this color into unfortunately still wet which is also a problem with this thicker acrylic paint because if it's thicker then it takes longer to dry compared to the normal Vallejo paints they can dry within seconds you know because that paint is so thin of this dark underground that I have. I have to put the paint on a little bit thicker, of course, so that I can get a good cover up. Just wondering. We have a lot of watchers here, but hardly anybody is saying anything. Everybody busy? Or what's going on? Chat is so quiet today. Huh? What's up there? Everybody's so quiet. Oh yeah, and I was talking about it earlier. Not sure if uh, everybody that's here now, if they caught that. Uh, day before yesterday, we had minus seven degrees Celsius. And I don't know, at zero degrees Celsius, that's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. At minus seven, 
That is something like, uh, what, 25, 20, something like that, or even uh, lesser. I'm not sure. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, that was friggin' cold. I did not have any desire to go out of the house. Ah, you're just listening in the background, huh? Okay. Yeah, no, and, uh, yeah. And yesterday, we had minus three degrees Celsius during the daytime. Yeah. Okay, it was cloudy, but the sun was up, you know. And then, yesterday evening, or yesterday night, I should say, I was around about 10 o'clock in the evening when I looked at my digital thermometer, and it was telling me it was plus 4 degrees Celsius. Huh? Mariano, you're not too far away from me. Uh, if you're not too far away from me, hey, buddy, and if you have a car and a free weekend and don't know what to do, and you got enough money in your pocket for gas, I'd say jump in the car and come on over and visit me. And we have a nice restaurant. Two houses, or let's say the second house next to me, with some good German food. Hey there, you do it. How you doing? What's up, John? If I remember correctly, your name is John. I hope. Oh, Barcelona. <laughs> ah, but I'm going to Frankfurt in February. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you'd be a lot closer, but not close enough. Mm -hmm. ah, just working right now, huh? Yeah. As you can see, I'm doing some more painting here. I was trying to mix up a sand color, but uh, I don't know. I might just put down this color first, and then next week, when my retirement is finally on, first thing I do is order up some sand colors, a light one and a dark one, and then go over this stuff that's already then dried up and repaint that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John. I, I wasn't sure. But it's better to ask instead of saying something wrong, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, but... Uh, Mariano, when you're in Frankfurt, I mean, okay. Uh, if you're flying, yeah. I don't think you're going to have... a rental car but uh yeah because from frankfurt to where i'm living right now that's still about a four and a half hour drive yeah. you sound like bob ross <laughs> thanks <laughs> yeah yeah well you know how that is I sound like him. If I look like him, then maybe I can get the paycheck from him. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely too far. Yeah, I understand that, Mariana. I understand that. But you know what I'm saying when I say four and a half hours, right? It's about 400 kilometers. 350 or something like that, you know, from Frankfurt to where I'm to where I'm living right now. So that wouldn't that wouldn't be an easy drive. I mean, you'd be on you'd be on the 
German Autobahn 99% of the time, which means you could drive drive like a hell, you know, drive like a bat. But yeah. So I'm gonna put this color on there. I think that would be a good base. And then just put some lighter colors on top of that and then I might get the right shading that I need for for sand and pebble you know it might just be perfect but yeah I still have enough here so where I can do go over and do a second coat in areas where it's still a bit thin, which is also good. But yeah, John, so that, uh, I hope you're still watching. I'm pretty sure you haven't seen this last week, what I was doing. There you go. There's Rocket. Raccoon. He's already mounted on his, uh, with his jetpack, you know, here. It's supposed to look a little bit like fire. And the smoke comes down. Then this is the smoke ring. And then we've got Groot here standing in the background. And then when I got everything here underground finished, then I can put the rocket on here because there's a nice big rocket that goes on here. Huh? Why was you do it timed out for five seconds? Nightbot, are you acting like an idiot again? Wait a minute. Nightbot, if you want to do something like that, let me see if you can do that again when I put John as a moderator here. Huh? Yeah. But why is it not showing that you're a moderator? Where is your hammer? <laughs> or your wrench, so to say. Otherwise, I'll go in there and remove the from Nightbot the moderator status and then see what he says. But as long as I got enough paint now, I can go through and do a little bit more cover up. And then when I get my sand colors, I can go over this with a thin coat. I don't have any problems anymore. trying to cover something up, you know. Oh, man. Church bells are loud out there. And unfortunately, I have two of them. One in front of me and one, and one behind me. looking better.
Whereby, instead of trying to do it like that, why don't I just turn this thing around as long as I can move it? Then I can see what I'm doing. May <laughs> but be a little bit nicer to my people. It's lightening up now. So, let me see. That's looking a little bit interesting. It's not the right color that I wanted, but it's getting there. So that means I have a good base for a lighter shade on top of it. do think I'm gonna let that be now oh yeah so and let this all dry up as you can see Oh, it's starting to look like that now. So that uh, we can say it looks like there's some dirt or sand, you know, between the rocks. It's gonna I do really think that's gonna look nice when I get that done. So now okay. Eh. Let's use these so long.
next one. Ah, but that's really too bad today. I think Martin didn't have any time to join into the live stream so that we could see what he's up to. Yeah, he just put out a new video today, Martin, you know, 3D, 3DP Iceland, where he's shown that uh, 8080 that he printed something I've got to print too, but I uh, don't have the time for it right now. I need to get my model finished. I'm not even sure if you guys have even seen parts that I've already printed, which is only three of them, because those three I wanted to print in the lighter gray color and then use something like uh, gray metallic which I have gray metallic or what I also have I forgot that I even had that it's two rolls of uh, uh, it's called under and seat yeah that's a really dark silver color so I thought of using this for the body I got at one point got those from das filament that means that's 800 grams uh, yeah 800 so that means I've got 1006 1600 to 1700 grams depending on if there's a little bit more on the roll but uh, 1600 grams of filament so that should be enough uh, so that I can print the body out. Yeah, but yeah. And uh, I have something else just on the side. I mean, I don't really like to say something like that, but uh, uh, I do need more Patreons. I mean, if, even if it's only one or two dollars a month or something like that, you know. But uh, the more that came in, the more that would be in the pot. So unfortunately, I only have one $1 Patreon and one $5 Patreon. Thank God for those two. Yes. And you two, you know who you are. I don't want to say your name out, but uh, God bless you and thank you so much. But unfortunately, the $20 Patreon that I had last year well november was his last payment to me i don't know why i think he had some problems at home or something like that but uh you know understandable you know if you if you can't afford it hey don't do it because i don't want to try to take somebody's last cent out of his pocket or something like that I mean, I'm not, I'm not that greedy or not not that stupid or however you want to say but, uh, you know if I had something like I'd say a total of 20 or 30 dollars each month on the patreon that would be a hell of a big difference like I had last year I was able to use that money to buy a bowl of filament or two pay for some of the painting or like I was also doing using that Patreon money to get parts for the hypercube and December 
that was Christmas. All the coffee money that came in, that was so fantastic. I had to put about 20 euros on top of that. And then I was able to order at AliExpress my large board with the LV8729 drivers, with the uh, Wi-Fi, and yeah, everything else. But the only thing that's really stupid, that's something I'm going to have to check out, see if I can get those extra. I'll show you something. There's, there's the display. There's the display. It's a touchscreen display, and you also have the option. You have the push button, turn switch, you know. Uh, I soldered that one already on because I thought, you know, once in a while it's easier to use that push button and then just dial around instead of tapping on this little display, you know, and then every once in a while you have to clean the display because of your smudgy fingers on that display, you know. Still got the film on it, which I'm not going to take off right now. No, but uh, gotta think. This cable right here, yeah, and they sent two of them. It's 20 centimeters long. I must say that thing is really short. Would have been better instead of sending two, two 20 centimeters if they would have sent one with 40 centimeters, you know? Then that cable would have been long enough so that I can put the display where I want to have it and then put the controller in the back of the printer. Uh, what's the display for? Oh, John, let me show you. That touch display is for this. This is the large X board. It already, it already came with the uh, uh, LV8729 drivers on it. All I had to do is just put the cooling blocks on each one. Then it came extra in the package, in the same box, of course. This second USB port, you had to plug that one in first. And then after you plug that one in, you can plug the, the wireless adapter right here, this one. You can plug that one then uh, right there into it. Uh, the large X board is already set up. So I don't have to do any type of upload programming or something like that. All I have to do is just connect this thing up, connect all the plugs and everything then all i have to do is just go into the display and do the setup there tell them okay that's 210 by 210 by 300 yeah and uh flow rate and you know max flow rate and all that stuff i, I downloaded from large uh pdf that shows all the settings that you have to do. And I mean, I'll probably be about a half an hour or maybe even an hour underway with that. But uh, yeah. Um, this thing, ordered this right after Christmas and got it two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. Came quickly. I was really amazed. And what's really nice about it, AliExpress was smart enough on that box. There was only a sticker on it for the postage. Who is to receive it and who is sending it? Yeah. No, no type of invoice or something like that. So that means even if customs would have opened the box up, they wouldn't have found any type of a, uh, clearance bill or, or, you know, any type of a bill inside of it. <laughs> if you want the bill for it, you have to go online and download it from there. 
So customs, they cleared that within two days, you know, just put their green sticker on it, send it, sent it on its way to me. And when it got here, I was really amazed. I didn't have to pay anything at all. No, but these uh, flat band cables. I mean, I'm just wondering, you know, if it's possible to get longer ones. And if yes, if I can get those Amazon or in eBay. That's the big question. It was I definitely need a longer one. display is going to be on the front of the printer and the controller is going to be of course behind the printer I think the power supply will also be behind the printer. Not sure yet. Because what I also want to do is I want to go to the local hardware store that we have here and see if I can get a small plexiglass or acrylic glass, glass plate that I, I can put under, underneath uh, the print bed, you know, on the on the bottom of the frame, and if that is possible to that I can do that, then what I will do is I'll put the power supply and the controller and everything underneath. Uh, as you can as you can see here on this bottom framework here. I can barely see it there. Let me let me change the screens over again, so so that we can get a better picture. That one transform. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got a bit of better picture on the on this bottom framework here. Yeah, there we go. Bottom framework. I want to put a plexiglass or acrylic glass, you know, some kind of a plate on top of that so that, you know, there won't be any debris falling down. I can clean it up from there. And then I can mount the power supply underneath and the controller. And then I won't have to worry about trying to find a longer cable for it for the display. Then I can mount the controller underneath and in a position where cables are long enough to go on to it and everything. But yeah, I mean, ah. Then in February, if everything goes good, and I'll be able, be able to order two things in my uh, my Amazon wish list. You go to the link there, you'll see everything. Yeah? And if you go to the Hypercube, you'll see there's only two things there that are left. There's the, the pulleys. For the GT2 with teeth, I need those. Ten of them. But that's also a bit expensive, I would say. You know, $9.99 for five. So that means roughly 20 euros or 20 US dollars. I wasn't sure. I think it's euros. 20 of them for uh, for that printer there. Oh, 
Uh, country is live. Test and OBS bit rate settings again. Uh huh. Okay. Your Patreon link isn't working. That is strange. Uh, do you have PayPal? Yes, I do. Simple PayPal, D O N A L D U S 57 at online.de. That's my email address and my PayPal address. But what's going on with my Patreon? Let me check that out. Uh, come on now. Where's the link for you? Oh my god. Uh, Uh, Patreon? Oh, that's easy. Yeah, if I would have known that, I could have said, hey, there you go. There's a link to my to my Patreon. There is a link there. And I do have something special for one who joins the $10 tier, so to say. Then you see if you want the model that costed me a lot of money back then. You'll see a model that you can download and print for yourself if you want. I don't know why that's not working there, Dad. Patreon? Huh. Da, 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 da. Let me check something out here. That is, that is strange. That is really strange. That is not working. Let me show. Let me take a look here. Yeah, Patreon, the German 3D print nerd. Should it be working? Huh? 404. What the heck is this here? to that link. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Because that's the same link as is, as I have in the description. ITTPS patreon.com the German 3D print nerd. Uh, maybe I have Afterwards, maybe I might have to, uh, I don't know what's going on with the formatting from the text here, because that does look a little bit stupid. After buying me a coffee, my Patreon page is up there instead of what, instead of down below where the Patreon is. <laughs> That's something I have to check out. Uh, YouTube creates a redirect link. Yeah. That is strange because when I got everything set up and everything, you know, I went over there and, uh, you know, went there, copied the link and posted it in the text. But I mean, that's good to know. Uh, uh, thank you, Mariano, for, for telling me that. Because that's really strange. No wonder. <laughs> Somebody goes on goes down there and wants to go to my Patreon and gets a 404 and wonders it probably sells uh, you know uh, what's going on there, you know? 
That is really strange. That is really strange. Something I don't understand. Because, uh, that was the same length that I had in Chrome, and it was showing my Patreon page, and looked the same down in the description. But I will change that right after, right after we're off. Because, uh, um, God bless you. Thank you, Mariano. I did I get an email? No, not yet. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, there's an email. Holy sh God bless you, Mariano. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, man. You know what? The hypercube's going to be finished next month. Oh man. Hey Mariano. Send me your send me your address per email. So that I can maybe send you something. You know, you can make somebody speechless doing something like that. <laughs> but really, thank you so much, Mariano. Yeah. <laughs> One second, let me check something out here. Otherwise, I can sit here and start doing something else. As I said, if it's still raining, there's something else I can do today on the live stream, but that's something that I'll do afterwards because it stopped raining. So that means the Don can go to the grocery store and get a little bit to eat. Because last five days I've only been eating sandwiches didn't have anything else in the refrigerator at that time. And then with that cold weather and then with the snow and rain and everything last week, it was in, impossible for me to jump on my electro scooter, drive one and a half kilometers to the grocery store. And then especially the yeah, day before yesterday at minus seven degrees Celsius, if I would have drove out and came back, I'd probably be sitting here with a cold. And that wouldn't have been good at all. But I do think we had a nice time here. I did manage to get a little bit more done on 
this diorama that I have. I'll still have to paint Groot. I mean, Groot, I think the color is too dark for him. He needs to be lightened up a little bit. But I'll use some Vallejo paints for that, I think. I'm not going to try and mix colors for him. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, I do think it's time that I say goodbye. I wish you all a nice weekend and for all happy printing. Thank you so much for jumping in today. I hope the stream has thumbs ups and not any thumbs down, but uh, yeah, we know who they are. But anyway, God bless you all. And we'll see you on the next live stream. Take care, everybody. Bye.